You may not have been aware of this, but this past Saturday was National Woody Wagon Day, a day celebrating a line of vehicles built between the 1930s and early 50s. The model known for its use of wood in its manufacturing, especially down the sides, during a time when steel was being reserved for making war equipment. In the spirit of this holiday, Bob LaFaro from LaFaro Insurance Company here to talk about insuring vintage cars. Uh, I love the topic, so let's get going. <laughs> let's start off by asking if carriers have problems insuring. Well, we'll start off with the Woodies, uh, insuring vehicles made out of wood. So I've seen markets doing features on woody cars. So if you have wood, apparently you'll still travel, Sean. Yeah. So where would you begin with suggestions on finding the best insurance for collector type vehicles? I mean, is this something you just add on your policy or what? Right. So to answer that question, I'd like to take a step back and take a look at settlement options under your typical auto policy first. Anyone who's had the unfortunate experience of tolling a vehicle can probably tell you the settlement they received was based on what we call an actual cash value. Actual cash value will settle based on what the car was worth at the time of the accident, previous to any damage sustained. Book value can be determined from sources such as Kelly Blue Book and NADA. Although the typical consumer may understand how this valuation basis makes sense for insuring a daily driver, same line of thinking wouldn't necessarily hold true for a collector car. Okay, let's talk about this. Would this be the only settlement option available under a, a typical auto policy? Yeah, so a number of carriers may offer what's called a stated value option, which will state a specific amount of coverage for the vehicle once it's added to the policy. Supporting documentation or other valuation may be required for this. The problem, however, is that stated value doesn't guarantee this is the amount the policyholder will actually receive if the vehicle's totaled. A carrier typically will still have the option of paying the lesser of the two between this and the actual cash value. Okay, so for anyone that owns or buys a vehicle with a, a significantly higher market demand um, than, than what's reflected under, let's say, book value, should you be looking at something different? That is correct. For this situation, the best settlement form to look for would be an agreed value option. This option is typically provided by carriers that specialize in your collector car coverage. Easy way to remember is this. Valuations are determined by coming up with a value that both the consumer and the carrier agree upon. Carrier will most likely require to see photos, possibly receipts for rebuilds, and even possibly an appraisal. Once the value is agreed upon, that's the limit that's paid in the event of a total loss. Okay, any counter viewpoints to, to consider um, when, it, when it comes to this kind of an option? Yes, there are, Sean. So first, it's very common for especially carriers that have restrictions on vehicle usage. It's critical that a consumer be familiar with these restrictions so as to make sure they're complying with the terms and conditions. Also, collector car programs can be very competitive, but you'll want to weigh that with the possible multi-car discount as well as premium accumulation that you may lose out by not having it on your family auto policy. At the end of the day, it's always best to check with your local agent and make them advise you as to which option is best for you. Always good advice. Bob LaFaro from LaFaro Insurance Agency talking about vintage cars. Like I said, favorite topic. Thank, Thank you, Bob. We'll talk Thank to you. Thank you, Sean. Stay with us.